In this episode, I wanted to teach you how to handle error responses from your registration and login form. But unfortunately, that is not going to happen because as of right now, the JVT plugin that we are using for our JVT authentication doesn't work properly with those responses. So let me just show you quickly what it does. So I'm just going to add a catch method right here to catch all the errors. Uh, save this. And now if we go to our application and I do something like John and whatever, some random password, if I click login, instead of getting the response for the error from the server, I get this court policy error, which is totally weird because our other requests work. And what's even weirder, if I do something like at j.com, so instead of username, I'm adding an email address right here and click login. As you can see, I get uh, the error. And as you can see, we get the data error, invalid credentials, and that's it. Uh, so it's weird. It's a weird error because right here, when we do this, instead of uh, this course error, we should actually be getting, so you should use email instead of password in this field, right? So this is not so much of a problem for the login form because usually just password and email does not match, but it would be nice to have uh, correct error responses for the reservation form uh, because uh, we want to tell the user maybe your email already is in use, your passwords do not match and so on, right? So it would be nice to get those responses right here. You can circumvent that by using some kind of front-end validation, but we are not going to be doing that. Uh, so I actually talked to the creator of this plugin, Ricardo, and we confirmed the error and he's looking into it. And as soon as he fixes it, I will show you how to do those error responses. But for now, we're just going to pretend like we already did that and continue with our checkout process. So in this episode, we want to create a confirmation page on which we are going to list some details for the user, what vehicle he's using, pick up and drop of dates and so on. And uh, we are also going to learn how to persist the data through all the refreshes. We already did something similar, but this method is going to be much easier and practically automatic so that we don't have to worry about that. And then in the next episode, we are going to create an actual reservation, which we are building it uh, for the last five episodes, I think, to that point. And that is going to be actually the end of this video series. Okay, so today confirmation, persisting the state, and uh, tomorrow probably uh, it's going to be making the actual reservation. So now, uh, once the user logs in, uh, we want to save the user and we want to save the token, so authentication, authentication token that we will use later. So I'm just going to paste this in because we did this a million times already. Uh, no, uh, we are just going to do user. So we want to save the user, which is going to be an object and we want to use the token, uh, which is just going to be a string and then we want to create our getters for them. So user state token. And we also wanna, uh, I'm just going to paste this in, we wanna create our mutations right here. So one is going to be for the user, so set user and set token, right? Save this. And then uh, down here in the login user. So currently we are getting a response, some sort of response if we check that response out. So if we do john at smith.com and the password is test. If I click login, as you can see, I get the status okay. And I get the data, which is going to be the token and the user object which we have our user ID, which is going to be very important to us in the next episode. Uh, okay, so how do we do that? Well, we already did this a million times. So I'm also going to just paste it in right here. Let me just find it. Okay, so we just want to commit the user and the token to our store. And that's about it. If I save this, let's try it out. So John, if I click login, 
Uh, I didn't get no nothing right here because uh, I deleted the console log response. Uh, but if we go to our Vuex, so view, we go to Vuex, as you can see right here, we have the token and then we have the user, right? Okay, so this is great. Now, once this happens, what we wanna do is we wanna redirect the user to the confirmation page. But of course, uh, before actually being able to do that, we need to create that confirmation page, we need to set up a route and so on. So in our view, views folder, we are going to create confirmation.view. Okay, template. Let me make this bigger. Okay, and I'm just going to paste in some boilerplate code. So this is just going to be a container. Uh, we are going to have a title of is this information correct? And then we want to display name, surname, vehicle, pickup time, drop of time. Okay, great. Save this. Uh, then we go to our router.js. Uh, let me make it a bit bigger. And uh, I'm just going to copy this out, paste it in. So the path is going to be, uh, path is going to be confirmation. And we are going to be using confirmation.view for that view, right? Save this. And now the next thing we wanna do, we wanna go to our store and right here, so once the user is logged in and we captured the data for that user, so the token and uh, uh, the actual user, we wanna push the user to the confirmation page. And how do we do that? Well, you just do router router.push and we want to push it to the route which is named confirmation and that should be it but as you can see I'm getting some sort of error right here because I actually don't have the router imported uh, in my store so we are going to do that at the top of the file so where the imports are right here we just do import router from router save this and let's try this out. Click login. And as you can see, we are getting somewhere, uh, but not to the right place. And that is because I think I screwed this up right here. So it should be confirmation with uh, capital C. Okay, so let's try this again. Login and now we get to the right route as you can see right here and now we want to display the name surname vehicle pickup drop off and so on so in our confirmation that view I'm just going to paste this in so we are importing daytime from Luxon because we are going to need it to transform some dates then we have export default and we want to get the name and surname of our user so of course, since our user is a getter in our store, we are going to use computed properties. So this store getters user. And if we check out our store currently, we have the user. And as you can see, the user has a name, surname, and a lot of other data. So right now we are just wanna display the name and surname. So let's test if this works user.name save it check out our browser and as you can see the name is john okay so the same thing will be for the surname surname great it, it does work so john smith okay uh, the next thing we want we want this vehicle so the vehicle uh, is actually also in our store and it's using the current vehicle object if we check it out, let me just find it. So vehicles, it should be somewhere up here. So the current vehicle is the first one. Current vehicle and you have some dates for it, uh, image, location and so on. What we need is a title of our vehicle. Okay, so the same thing like with a user. I'm just going to copy this and this should be current vehicle. Okay, and we just go right here and do vehicle title. Okay, save this. See if this works. Okay, so the DeLorean. 
Okay, now we need to set up our pickup and drop of times. So let's just go right here and set up a pickup. Pickup. And what, what I want to do right here, because I'm going to need this date uh, for the next episode, and I'm going to need it in the original format so that we can send it to our backend. So I want to have a format date and an original date. So to do that, I will just do return. Return and we want to return an object which will uh, have our original date. Right, so the original date is just going to be this. So this store getters and then pick update. Right, and now we also want to have a format date, which is going to be daytime from ESO, and then we also want to get this. So we want to get that date and time from ESO and then format it to uh, be a human readable date. Save this and now we want to return that right here. So for the pickup, pickup dot, if you do original, right, uh, we are going to get this. So we of course don't want to show the date like this, but we actually want to get formatted. Save this and now we get this date. Okay, uh, the same thing is also of course true for the drop of date. And we want to just make this drop of date and also this right here. Save it, see if it works. It works, but we chose the same dates uh, once we, uh, when we were choosing the drop off and pick up time. Okay, uh, so we have this set up and now uh, we will run into a problem and that problem is of course going to be this. So if I refresh this page, we already talked about this. So if I refresh it, I lose everything from my uh, store. So there is no name, there is no surname, there is no vehicle, there is no token, there is no pickup, there is no drop off, nothing. So we already talked about this uh, in the previous episodes. If we go to our story we, and we kind of found a solution for it. So well, for the set dates, we have this. So we, we are saving our dates to the local storage so that we can read them from there. But you don't want to do that for every property. So now I'm going to show you an easier and practically automatic way of doing this. So there is this cool little plugin called View Persisted State. And what it does, it's going to persist your state by saving it to the local storage and then always automatically reading it. So whenever you refresh the page, all of your data is going to stay in the local storage. So how do you install it? You just go right here, copy this out. Uh, we go to our app directory and just paste this in. Okay, once this is done, uh, you would just uh, copy this out. So we wanna import create uh, create persisted state from Vuex persisted state. Okay, go to our code editor, go to our store up here. Is this in so we are importing create persisted state and then you need to define it as a plugin right here so at the beginning of, beginning of your store and that's it so this is all you need to do so let's test it out uh, we go right here we go to our app at the beginning because we don't have any information right now. Let me just refresh this. Okay, so it's actually saving something. Let's uh, go to New York. Let's say this is our pickup time. This is going to be our drop off time, filter vehicles. We do more details, click on continue. Uh, then we log in and we go to our confirmation page. 
John Smith, DeLorean, whatever. Now, if I refresh this, as you can see, our information is still here. And this is happening because if we go to application and then we go, let me make this bigger. Okay, if we go to Vuex, as you can see right here, all of our information is actually in our store. And this plugin, what it does, it's automatically reading that information and filling your store uh, with that information. So if you go to View, Vuex also, you can see that all of the information is right here and that's why we are getting this. Now, before we wrap this episode up, I just wanna make a disclaimer, so... Uh, when doing this, uh, you shouldn't be doing it like this in production, right? So you shouldn't be saving uh, sensitive data to your local storage, especially the authorization token, which we did. Uh, so right here you have this customized storage. Uh, where you have an example of using cookies instead of local storage. And as you can see, you can set this cookie to be secure when it expires and so on. Uh, so please use this for production for the demo purposes and us and uh, this video series this is okay the way we are doing it but please use cookies you sh really shouldn't uh, put sensitive data into local storage for security reasons okay so this has been it for this video in the next video we are going to make an actual reservation to our backend but for now just remember that everything we did here will be available for you on github the link will be in the description below and as always thank you guys for watching and i will see you in the next one